the number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Wix Studio, one end to end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. your content disappeared overnight, would anyone truly miss it? I mean, you'd probably freak out and panic, understandably, but would anyone else notice, and even if they did, how bothered would they be? Just raise your hands for me if you want to get your brand noticed. Yeah, pretty much everybody. And keep your hand up if you have what it takes. Sorry, keep your hand up if you want to create distinctive content that stands out. Again, most people. Now, here's a challenging question. Do you have what it takes to create inspirational content? Who thinks they can create inspirational content? Oh, one or two confident people. Okay, well, don't worry the rest of you. I'm going to help you because I believe you're all capable of creating inspirational content. But I wonder how much we genuinely push ourselves to inspire, how much we stretch ourselves and stick our heads above the parapet. I mean, don't you as users feel overwhelmed by the amount of information you encounter online daily? Have you noticed how all content looks eerily similar, like a factory production line? And AI, generated content is compounding this problem. But I want to create, I want to awaken the rebellious creative within you. You too could have blue hair and red boots or however you want to express yourself. I want to shake up content writing because I think we're capable of much more, of bringing in what no AI can do, of being original, wise, opinionated, trusted, creative, surprising, and witty, of thinking critically, challenging the status quo, of being inspirational. This is the stuff that gets you noticed and remembered. But to get there, you might need a bit of help. I want to know, though, why we restrict ourselves so much when it comes to content writing. We've just applied so many constricting rules. So I'd like to break you free from the chains of prescriptive writing, of formulaic writing, from the mundane, the boring, the samey, and the repetitive. Imagine how your work and business would transform if you were empowered to be original, creative, and distinctive. So let's stop settling for that'll do, and mm, it's good enough. Let's stop making content that's just filling the digital void. I want you to open your mind to being different. So let's dive in, pun intended, to the sea of content. As users yourselves, you're bombarded with wave after wave of content every day. And when it all looks the same, isn't the problem self-evident? I mean, the internet is flooded with generic, educational, and informational content. And users are drowning. Businesses are getting lost. So there's so much competition for our attention. So why are we all making content in the same way? I mean, you might think your content is like a big, yellow, stripy, shiny, unmissable beacon. In reality, you're probably a red boy in a line of red boys in a long line of samey content. I mean, you might have a niche, which could be represented like this, but AI-produced content has turned the sea of content into an ocean. So you're still going to struggle to get noticed. And then AI has helped us to make content all kind of be the same, which makes it look like this, a sea of white boys. And it's overwhelming, isn't it? So we have to take action. If our content doesn't make waves, it's at serious risk of sinking without trace. I'm loving my nautical metaphors today. <laughs> It's at risk of disappearing into an ocean of mediocrity. Now, 
This quote really sums up for me what happens when we forget about the importance of the human factor in our writing. We are drowning in information while starving for wisdom, which is by E.O. Wilson, who's a sociobiologist. Because when we forget about the human factor, we lose out on wisdom, insight, understanding, and critical thinking. We can only add value through our unique human perspectives, the thing that drives audiences to us to get insights they can't get elsewhere. And in the meantime, we're drowning and we need help to find each other. So let's make some noise. Let's get their attention. Let's stand out and be distinctive. We need a serious search and rescue mission. And that starts by asking ourselves some hard questions. How much of your content is truly unique? How much of your content adds genuine value and a new perspective? And how much of your content is interesting, creative, or inspirational? Because we need to act to focus on quality over quantity. I want to introduce you now to the content cage. I think content writing has become like a cage. Here you are, tapping away at your keyboard, trying hardest to follow every rule you've learnt. But what's the point? Because we're all writing exactly the same stuff in exactly the same way. So, the content cage is holding you back. Bar one is being formulaic and using templates um, and guidance from other people. Now, how many of you have downloaded templates and formulas from content gurus online for blogs, emails, and landing pages? I mean, we've all done it. I'm not saying they don't have a place, but are they holding you back? They're so prescriptive, and if you've downloaded them, serve thousands of other people. Bar two is about following best practice, or so-called, and standard advice. Because the more we've learned about this, the more we've all conformed. More advice has turned into rigid rules. And I'm going to let you into a secret. There's more than one way to write. Rules are just a construct we've invented. Frameworks are a starting point, but they should launch our creativity not replace it. Bar three is fear, or lack of confidence. Now, many people lack confidence with writing, and they lack confidence to write beyond the confines of the prescribed cage. We're afraid we won't get traction. We're afraid of negative reactions from our peers or our managers. We're afraid of being different from the industry norm. We're afraid to have opinions or show personality, but that's holding us back. Bar four is a lack of technique. What if you want to write distinctively, but you don't know how? It's not complicated. All you need is a handful of techniques. Small changes make big differences. And you don't need a creative writing degree to be original in a human voice. Bar five is having a lack of ideas. What if you don't have new things to say? What if you're stuck? Well, there are simple ways to generate ideas and insights. All you need is a few tools in your idea kit, so watch this space. Now, the problem with AI-produced writing is it reinforces the cage. I mean, when ChatGPT and the large language models came along, everybody got excited, churned out reams of content. But the problem is, if you rely on AI to write your content, you make the bars of the cage thicker and stronger. Because AI is like a massive database. It can never be original, creative, or distinctive, because it kind of takes an average of everything. And the more that goes into it, the more average that kind of becomes. It generates the most likely next word, according to an algorithm. It isn't intelligent. It just gives the appearance of that. It's not really writing. It's just doing a lot of sums. And I say, what's the point? It can do incredible things, don't get me wrong, but writing engaging long-form copy isn't one of them. It's a sure path to send your content to the ocean floor. So what's the evidence of this? Well, this is a LinkedIn post that did the rounds about six months ago, where a company got AI to churn out a ton of content. They had a huge spike in traffic, and then it fell off a cliff. Why? Poor quality content, low engagement, nothing new to see. And AI has a very recognizable style and cadence. 
It's waffly, it's verbose, it's not clear and concise. And readers spot it a mile off. So it's important to use human language and turns of phrase and tap into something called the sociolinguistic code. Now, I'm a bit of a language geek, so I love this stuff. But it's a big, complicated word, but it actually means something very simple. A sociolinguistic code is the words and phrases a certain social group use. So you'll have it with your family. You'll have certain words and phrases that have evolved over time that are unique to you or your partner. This is also applies to sectors. Uh, I was recently writing for a developer agency, a web app development agency, and they wanted content for coders. Now, coders have a very specific sociolinguistic code. If you describe things in a way they don't recognize, you've lost credibility. So it's super important to tap into that. And AI can't do that. So what are the benefits of breaking free from the content cage? Well, firstly, you'll get noticed, just like a lighthouse. I call it lighthouse content, distinctive, unique, and the stuff that sets you apart. You can also become memorable. Why be an ordinary lighthouse when you can be a massive weird one? Be different and be surprising. Breaking content, sorry, breaking down the content cage also helps you to be a leader. So this photo was actually taken last week outside my house. Behind that hedge is a lake and there are swans that live there. And every year, when the cygnets get to a certain age, they go walk about around the estate and they came up to our front door. Well, to use this analogy, they're always in single file behind the parent. You are the swan, the parent swan as a leader. The cygnets are your audience and peers. Breaking free from the content cage will also attract new business by creating a buzz that you're somebody who has something interesting to say. It will also help grow your following by turning new customers into fans. You will attract more of the kind of customer who fits your brand. Even if you lose a few, the quality and alignment of your audience will improve. So, Let's get down to some proper techniques and practical ways to break free from the content cage. First of all, you have to focus on what you're going to say. We reduce the bars by firstly breaking AI's influence and stop using it for long-form content. Just don't do it. And instead, we re-embrace our beautiful, individual, human voices. Here are some of the things that you can say to help you produce original content. You can use the first person. Stop being afraid to say I. Stop using third person generic writing to bury the individual humans whose insights and experiences are our biggest asset. Use storytelling. Compelling narratives of customer challenges, industry developments, the brilliant people in our organizations and their journeys. This is amazing stuff. Use fresh ideas. Push yourselves to find new things to say. Trends. Reflect on past trends. Comment on current trends. Forecast new ones. Think about what's coming next in your sector. Give opinions about it. Use interviews. Harness the expertise and wisdom of your colleagues, networks, and customers. Again, it creates content that's unique to you. And do your own research. I mean, you can comment on research that's been done and give opinions, or you can commission external or internal research, large scale or small scale, formal or informal, focused on a customer or sector wide. It doesn't really matter. The point is, doing this stuff gives you completely unique content. Because originality is the key to getting noticed, and it's the thing that AI cannot compete with. OK, so we focused on what to say. Now let's focus on how we say it. Firstly, tone of voice. It's important to tap into how humans speak to each other. Corporate language, highly technical language, just alienates so many people. You can simplify language without being simplistic. Simpler phrasing can actually sound more intelligent and concise than complex, waffly language. And enrich your writing with idioms and metaphors to add color. 
and tap into that important socio-linguistic code of that sector. Now, structure. I don't want you to be afraid to break structural norms and protocols. I mean, many blogs, you'll have seen them, kind of read a bit like school essays. In this blog, I'm going to write. And we can do better. So question each sentence you write. Is it engaging? How do I make it more interesting? Do I even need this sentence? And make your words earn their place. Have a strong line of argument. You can compel your reader to stick with you by being persuasive. Having a logical, progressive structure. Using subheadings to tease them and lead them. Anticipate their potential counter-arguments and make them curious. Now, narratives, we've heard, uh, there have been several talks about storytelling over the last few days, and it's so important to learn about good storytelling. But we can actually learn from fiction in terms of narrative structure. Whatever story you're telling, create a hook to engage, follow a journey, and resolve a problem. And you will have your audience in the palm of your hand. And finally, oh, sorry, I've skipped ahead. Um, I see the next slide coming before I see that one, so it distracted me. Real people. Let's talk about human voices. I was just very human there, so you can relate. Add first-person quotes to everything. Use real views of colleagues and contacts. It gives you so much credibility. And finally, readability. Don't make your reader work hard to read things. And I'm not just talking about design side. I'm also talking about vocabulary, shorter sentences, chunking up long paragraphs, using clear subheadings. And please, this is for my personal bugbear, use left-aligned text. Center-aligned text is so hard to read because the eye can't scan back and find the next line easily. So those readability practices help so much. OK. So, we've discussed what AI isn't very good at and what we can do to create original content, but what can you use AI for? I mean, I think it's amazing, and I use it for loads of things, but I don't use it for long-form writing. It's important to know its strengths and its limitations. You could use it for planning. I mean, use AI as your PA or coach. Get it to ask you questions to extend your thinking. Get it to plan your diary or put your ideas in a logical order. I mean, you can build a plan with loads of complicated factors. It would take ages to do manually. Sorry, manually. It's a computer, so make it compute. Synonyms and rewording. If you need to reiterate something, find a new phrase, stop repeating the same old tired language like solutions, insights, and empowering, or get it to write things in three different styles and compare them. Or you could even invent a tonal scale from dull to dramatic and explore the nuances in between. Note-taking and paraphrasing. If you stick a big, long transcript from an interview into ChatGPT, it will give you all the key points, which is amazing. But just be sure to fact check, because it makes mistakes and it doesn't actually care. <laughs> OK, iterations. Iterations for short form copy. It's great for this. It takes a lot of the legwork away. Headlines, call to actions, taglines, hundreds of options for short form copy generated in a second. So if inspiration hasn't struck, it gives you a leg up. It will help you churn through so you can pan for gold. Questionnaires and research. If you're designing your own research, AA is great at creating questions. And analysis. Analyze anything to give you something original to say. Data, tables, chunks of content. Get it to scan white papers. Just remember that it heavily resists quoting statistics accurately for some reason, so always double check. OK, so AI can make you more creative and original. It can support you, but it can't replace you. It can even teach you new things. It's a tool, a brilliant tool, but it's just a tool. To give you the full quote from um, E.O. Wilson, we're drowning in information while starving for wisdom. The world henceforth will be run by synthesizers, people able to put together the right information at the right time, think critically about it, and make important choices wisely. And it's that wisdom, it's that ability to think critically, to gather information for fresh insights, 
that sets us apart. So use the resources you have on your doorstep. Here are some key questions to take back to your team. What are our unique values and how do we showcase these in our content? How can we push ourselves to be inspirational, creative and original? What would happen if we did that? If we did create authentic human content? And as individuals, how could your career transform if you created thought leadership content with opinions and fresh ideas? Because it's an amazing opportunity to set yourself apart. So I'm Catherine Jones, copywriter, copywriting trainer, and if you're interested in learning more about writing training, then come and speak to me afterwards. Thank you very much. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 